Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to explain you about the classification of embedded systems. So it is possible to have a multitude of classifications for an embedded systems, but based on different criteria, some of the criteria used in the classification of embedded systems we will be learning in this class. So let's start our class. So the classification of embedded systems are based on four criteria. Number one is based on the generation. Number two, it's based on the complexity and performance of an embedded systems. Number three is all about on deterministic behavior of a real time system. And number four is based on the triggering given to an embedded systems. So let's see the classification based on generation. So here, based on generation, embedded systems were classified into four types. They are first generation embedded systems, second generation embedded systems, third generation embedded systems, and fourth generation embedded systems. Now, let's see in detail about the classification based on generation. So, starting with the first generation embedded system. So, first generation embedded systems are built around 8-bit microprocessors and 4-bit microcontrollers. So whenever we speak about 8-bit microprocessors, 8085 is considered and 4-bit microcontrollers are Z80 we consider. Coming to the hardware circuit used in first generation embedded system, they are very simple and the software used to it is also very simple. So Few examples when we look for first generation embedded systems are digital telephone keypads and stepper motor control units. Coming to the second generation embedded systems, so second generation embedded systems are a bit uh, advanced of first generation embedded systems. So second generation embedded systems are built around 16 bit microprocessors and 8 to 16 bit microcontrollers. That means the configuration of microprocessor and microcontroller is changed. Along with that, these second generation micro embedded systems are a bit complex and powerful compared to first generation microprocessors and microcontrollers. So in second generation micro, second generation of embedded systems, embedded operating system is used for their operation and in second generation embedded systems, we use certain examples like they are used in SCADA systems and data acquisition systems. So whenever we see a data acquisition systems, like if you see the first figure in the slide, it is all about the digital CROs or the digital multimeters, which we use in our laboratories, electronic laboratory. Coming to the third generation embedded systems, third generation embedded systems are the advanced version to the second generation where here the embedded systems are built around 32 bit microprocessors and 16 bit microcontrollers. Along with that, the concepts of applications and domain specific processors or controllers like digital signal processors and application specific integrated circuits they are nothing but asics were used in the third generation embedded system so when we are using uh, dsp concepts and asic concepts the instruction set what we give is also complex and they are very powerful so instruction pipelining also came into the existence and th in third generation embedded systems. So some of the examples of third generation embedded systems are robotics, media, industrial process controls, networking, and etc. Coming to the fourth generation of embedded systems. Fourth generation embedded systems are built around 64 bit microprocessors and 32 bit microcontrollers. So these fourth generation embedded systems are using, uh, will, they are used the concept of system on chip, whereas they use the multi-core processors in building fourth generation embedded systems. So system on chip is nothing but it is a so total system on a single chip. Coming to uh, 
the performance of fourth generation embedded systems yes it as it is using a real time operating system for their functioning the performance of this embedded system will be very high and the complexity of the circuit will be very high and the, it is very powerful for utilizing some of the examples of fourth generation embedded systems are the smartphones and the mobile internet devices so mobile is not less than equal to your computers so whole bulky huge computer is evaluated to a small chip it is placed on a small chip so that is the reason it this technology is called system on chip technology likewise cameras so there are so many examples which we see in our daily life from this fourth generation embedded system so this is about the first criteria and coming to the second criteria of classification in embedded system is based on the complexity and performance so based on the complexity and performance embedded systems are divided into three types they are number one small scale embedded systems medium scale embedded systems and large embedded systems so now let us see the first type that is small scale embedded systems so small scale embedded systems are simple in application that means these embedded systems are used for simple applications and here the performance is not time critical here these embedded systems are built around low performance and the low cost 8 or 16 bit microprocessor and microcontrollers that means these small scale embedded system may or may not contain the operating system in it so if you want to see the example the small scale embedded systems are all nothing but the basic electronic toys that is automatic toys what we see in the market coming to the second classification based on the complexity is medium scale embedded systems so medium scale embedded systems are slightly complex in hardware and software requirements compared to the small scale embedded systems these embedded systems are built around the medium performance and low cost 16 or 32 bit microprocessors and microcontrollers and it even utilizes the dsp processors okay along with that these medium scale embedded systems contain embedded operating system that is nothing but real time operating systems and we use these medium scale op embedded system especially in industrial machines and coming to the third one is large scale embedded systems so large scale embedded systems are also called as sophisticated embedded systems these embedded systems are highly complex with respect to hardware and software and coming to the structure that is circuit of large scale embedded system it is built around high performance 32 or 64 bit risk microprocessor and microcontroller and we even use pld's and multi core processor in the configuration of large scale embedded systems and here for these embedded systems the response is considered as time critical because we as we are using the real time operating system the time uh, the response of time critical should be high along with that it even utilizes the concepts of task scheduling prioritization and management we study about these three points in our next few classes where we study about real time operating system and the examples for this is these sophisticated embedded systems are especially used in mission critical applications or the uh, defense applications etc so one of the example is the drone camera where we use the sophisticated embedded systems so this is all about based on the system complexity and performance coming to the third classification of embedded system that is classification based on deterministic behavior so deterministic behavior is nothing but this application is mostly applicable for real-time systems and deterministic behavior is nothing but see if an example if there if you want to design an embedded system you know the output of that embedded system before itself then that it's called a deterministic behavior okay so these type of task execution behavior of an embedded system either it can be a deterministic or non-deterministic but when you are designing an embedded system in maximum cases they will be a deterministic 
embedded systems. So based on the execution behavior, real-time embedded systems are divided into again hard real-time embedded system and soft real-time embedded system. We even study about these two types in our future classes. Coming to the fourth criteria, that is fourth classification is nothing but a, a classification of embedded system which is done based on triggering. So here, why to trigger an embedded system? So embedded system is triggered to make that a reactive in nature. So reactiveness is nothing but with not less than a delay, with not less than a time span, the output has to be occurred whenever input is given. So the reactiveness is nothing but within the less time, less, uh, less span of time, the output has to be known. Example, if you see a bomb detector or intruder detectors, the response of that embedded system, those machines should be very reactive so that only there we can uh, be aware of or we can avoid the danger damages happen in uh, markets. Okay, so reactive systems are again divided based on two types that is event triggering embedded systems and time, time triggering embedded systems. So this is all about the classification done in the embedded system based on four different criteria. So hope I think everyone is clear with this uh, embedded system classification based on four different criteria. Thank you. Thank you for listening my class. If you like my class, if you like my videos, please like the videos, share my videos, comment and subscribe my channel to see the other videos which I upload in my channel. Thank you everyone. Be safe. Be happy.